What's good? What's good? I am back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. This is episode 99. So as long as I got me some topics to go in with tomorrow, we'll be at 100. I'm going to do that big uh, press release on that ad campaign. And I'll probably take a week off to reevaluate things and just, you know, critique my um, podcast through the year. Just see what I want to change and, you know, going forward and whatnot. Um, don't forget my podcast is sponsored by Promo Palace LLC at promopalace.biz. If you need online marketing promotions for your music, your product, your brand, or your service, check out promopalace.biz. If you're a dog lover and you're a cat lover, you like T-shirts and hoodies with dogs and cats on them, then check out New Little Apparel at newlitter.com. That's N-E-W-L-I-T-T-E-R.com. And last but not least, for Shizzle, I got to shout out DizzleBrand.com. Just add ice, Dizzle on ice, step into the future, do your Dizzle, DizzleBrand.com. Now, Dizzle is not technically a sponsor of this podcast, but my mentor and good friend, Christopher Roker, is part owner of Dizzle. And so, you know, like, I do what I can to help. I run their Facebook um, profile page and their Facebook fan page, um, pretty much managing their TikTok, and they manage the Instagram, you know, and then I give them advice on their website and stuff like that as well. Plus, we're trying to get Dizzle included here in North Carolina, start with Cumberland County, my county, and whatnot. Um, first things first, let me get into some scores. Uh, Memphis beat Cleveland, which, I mean, that could have went either way, but Memphis is balling out right now. John Morant and Memphis is going to be a scary team come playoff time. And Kendrick Perkins said John Morant should be in the MVP combo. And you know what? I agree. I understand J.J. Reddick says, oh, when they win games without John Morant. But, I mean, John Morant has been nothing short of spectacular. Toronto beat San Antonio. The Knicks beat the Pacers. The Pacers just, they might as well go ahead and get those guys traded. They're just plummeting. Suns beat the uh, New Orleans Pelicans and the Lakers beat the Sacramento Queens. I mean the Kings. Um, they're playing like some Queens right now. They need a. They probably need to move off from De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Hill. They probably both got good and uh, Marvin Bagley. You know, maybe Harrison Barnes too. I would just start with um with Halliburton and the Davion Mitchell kid that they just drafted. Go him at two-guard, Halliburton at point guard, and just build around that, man. De'Aaron Fox has been in the league long enough to show you that he doesn't translate to winning. Yeah, he's putting up numbers and stuff, but, you know, it doesn't translate to winning. And um, our power picks are pretty much still the same. Still the same, number one. Phoenix, nope, I mean, my bad. Number one, Golden State Warriors. Number two, Phoenix Suns. Number three, the Bulls. Number four, the Nets. And number five, the Bucks. And, um, do we got a Thursday night game coming up? We got a Thursday night game coming up, right? Who we got playing Thursday night? Let's see. Uh, I'm not seeing the Thursday night game on it. So I'm guessing, oh, so they got, oh, the Thursday night games got moved to Saturday. They got moved to Saturday. So we got these two Saturday night games, Kansas City and Denver, Dallas and Philly. Uh, I'm going Kansas City over Denver, and I'm going Philly over Dallas. Philly's balling out, man. Philly's the best running team. They got the best running game in the NFL. If I know anything about the NFL, you know, because I was a big 1985 Bears fan, you know, two things win in football more than anything. And that's a dominant running game and a dominant defense. And if you got both, you can just have a subpar and average Quarterback like a Jim McMahon for the Bears, a Trent Dilfer for the Ravens. Um, 
what was it? Brad, um, Brad, Brad something for the, uh, the guy for the Tampa Bay. I can't even think of his name. That's, 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 that's how average he was. Like he was so average, you know, it was Brad something, but, um, you can have this average quarterback, this, you know, and some people be like, well, he's just a game manager. Well, a lot of the great quarterbacks will tell you that it's your job is to manage the game. Everybody's supposed to be a game manager. The, lo- the elite and the non-elite, you know. So if you can't manage the game, then what are we talking about here? Um, let me go into my little bit of the standings. Let's go into Paul's power pick, see if they've changed any. They really ain't changed. Um, number one, Green Bay Packers. What more can I say? Number two, um, I still got the Chiefs. Still got the Chiefs. Um, Number three, Tampa Bay. Number four, the Rams. And number five, the Bills. But this could all change this coming up week. You can see Cincinnati might move up in there. Um... Eagles, I mean, who knows? The Eagles might move in there. Arizona won last week. They might move back in there. They beat Dallas, so we never know. But that's my top five for Paul's Power Picks. Um, Let me get into a few of these topics. We're going to save the political ones. Uh, I see this thing where a reporter on the Parkinson Spiegel show says he would not vote for Aaron Rodgers for the MVP because he's a jerk. Is that what we're doing now? I mean, what the MVP vote isn't the most valuable player award for a non-jerk. No, it's the most valuable player award. I mean, Packers have been in my pause power picks top number one since I started it. And you're going to – and I – and – I would be such a hypocrite if I said, well, Aaron Rodgers is not even in my MVP race because he's a jerk, you know. That's the thing people don't understand, man. Like, a lot of successful people are jerks and assholes. The nice guy finishes last. What do y'all not get about that? The non-jerk finishes last. Nice guys finish last. You know why nice guys finish last? Because they get into the 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 business. They get into a meeting with some cutthroat sharks in the business world, and they get eaten alive. And I ain't saying nice guys can't be successful. Elon Musk is. I don't know. Elon Musk is not so so nice as everybody thinks. He could be a jerk. Elon Musk, I've heard Elon Musk be a jerk. When people are being jerks to him, he'll be a jerk back. You know, some people, even nice guys fight, can fight fire with fire. They can be jerks, you know what I'm saying? But the super nice, I mean, the guy that's just nice all the time finishes last. It, It does. The guy that's not willing to fight fire with fire and snap back and and fight back. Nah, he's not going to make it, man. He's not going to make it. So, I mean, you look at, you think Jay-Z's not a jerk? <laughs> Kanye's a jerk. Look how successful he is. 50 Cent. Man, there's a lot of dudes in this. Like, once you get it, once you get super rich and get an ego, you're pretty much almost entitled to be a jerk. And if you had to be, and if you were a jerk the whole way to the top, why would you change now? You know, I, but it's so we don't vote for MVPs based on if a guy's a jerk or not. I mean, Antonio Brown's a jerk, but he was literally the best wide receiver in the NFL at one point. You literally had to vote him as the number one wide receiver in the NFL. But if you sit there and be like, well, I'm not going to vote for him because he's a jerk. Actually, you're kind of being a jerk for doing that. You're kind of being a jerk for saying, I'm not going to vote for the best player in the freaking world or, or the NFL because he's a jerk. 
I'd be like, vote. I mean, like, Michael Jordan was the biggest jerk on the planet. Michael Jordan was the biggest jerk on the planet, man. He got the MVP vote all the time, damn near. Stop it, man. That's not how we vote MVPs. You solely vote on the performance on the court. And if Aaron Rodgers does not play this season for the Green Bay Packers, their record would not be 13 and 3. It would be 3 and 13. Jordan Love would be 3 and 13 if Green Bay was playing. That's how you decide who's MVP or not. When LeBron leaves Cleveland and they literally get the number one pick the next year, that shows you how valuable it is. And he goes back and then they literally go into the championship first year, that shows you how valuable he is. And LeBron could be a jerk. LeBron's a jerk. But am I going to say I'm not voting for LeBron as MVP or All-Star because he's a jerk? There's a lot of jerks that are successful. Most of the successful people are jerks. In every business field you could think of, a lot of the top people are jerks and assholes. You know, that's just plain. Now you're being a jerk because you're just playing hate. You're just being a hater now. You're being a jerk because you're just hating for no reason. So that this reporter on Parkins and Spiel, Spiegel, to be honest with you, just because he came out and verbally said that, he should lose his vote. He should not be able to vote for MVP because he's not voting based on fairness because he's going to vote against anybody who's a jerk. Whether they're the best player, they could be the best player in the world, and he's going to vote them against them because they're a jerk. That's not how it works. All right, I see this thing. Um, Eagles fans fall over the rail, and Jalen Hurts checks to see if everyone is okay and take pictures. Um, basically, it was like being at a rock concert, a hip-hop concert, where, you know, like the crowd is just going crazy, and people fall off, this, fall off uh, things and fall over the rails and all types of stuff. But why I want to talk about this is because Jalen Hurts is like he could have just kept going. Some quarterbacks would have kept going. Some of them would have been some assholes, like probably somebody like um like uh what's my man um that played for Baltimore Ravens. I can't even think of it. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco probably would have kept going. Somebody like Joe Flacco would have probably kept going, or oh boy, he's played for the uh the Bears. I can't even think of his name. But um, there was quarterbacks that I can't – I don't know why I can't even think of this guy's name. Maybe because he sucked. I don't even know why he was the Bears quarterback that long. But he uh, he definitely – definitely probably kept going. The, way, the fact that Jay, Jalen Hurts stopped, made sure everybody's okay – and then two pictures with all them. Just goes to show you how fan base works, man. How you're supposed to be when you have fans like Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has tons of Philly fans right now. Philly fans are going crazy over Jalen Hurts because they, they're 9-7, above 500, might make the playoffs. Um, right now, I think they're – are they in the playoffs right now? Yeah, they're a wild card right now in the playoffs. They're in the playoffs right now. They got to be ecstatic, going crazy. When you got fans like that, you supposed that's how you're supposed to react to your fans. You ain't supposed to be an asshole and just keep walking and keep it moving. You know, like, cause to be honest with you, they're lucky nobody got hurt. It was like a – look like five, six, seven got, people just literally fell over the rail and fell on each other and stuff like that. I mean, there's no, no, no telling what could have happened. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could have broke a leg, broke an arm dislocated the shoulder. They're all lucky as hell. I mean, my mom did still fell at work one time and dislocated her shoulder. So a bunch of people falling on each other, you know. And Jalen Hurts just goes to show you what kind of leader he is. Um, those Alabama quarterbacks seem to be real good leaders. Um, even if they're not the greatest of quarterbacks, like at throwing and stuff like that, they just seem to be real good leaders. They, they seem to know what it takes to be a good leader. Um, big ups to to Jalen Hurts. Um, 
you know, because I talk about this in music business all the time, the way artists treat their fan base. You're not going to keep your fans if you just trash them and you're, you're an asshole. That's that's the one thing. That's when you can't be a jerk. You don't be a jerk to your fans. But Aaron Rodgers isn't a jerk to his fans. He's a jerk to the media. You know, because the media is a bunch of jerks too. So, you know, they ask some jerk-like questions half the time. You know, like the question that when Westbrook got asked a crazy question, he's like, what? What the? Man, y'all cats is tripping. I'm out. Like, they asked some of the most idiotic questions on the planet, man. You know, it's like, what are we doing here? So, but yeah, big ups to Jalen Hurts, man. Um, checking out all the fans before, you know, he just walks past them like some quarterbacks would have took pictures, and did what celebrities are supposed to do when you have a loyal, diehard fan base. Um, okay, I see this topic on this uh, podcast I was watching. It was uh, something Jericho. Hold on, let me bear my phone. Jericho Green, I think that's his name. It was uh, this uh, African-American brother out of uh, Cali. I want to say his name, but yeah, Jericho Green. Um, reminds me of me because he, he doesn't give you the PG-13 version of what he has to say. Um, he says what he feels. He just he, he says what he feels, and he means what he says. So um, he was talking about this topic where gender-neutral displays in Cali, and I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, is that what we're getting at to this world that – People are too – so our main concern in society is making sure we have gender-neutral displays so we don't offend people and their made-up sexes and genders. I mean, stop it. You know, it's like the, the non-binary people. Because um, I, I was talking about the non-binary teacher talking about being confronted by the students confused. I'm confused. Somebody saying they're not male or female, that's that is fairy tales. You're either born male or female or hermaphrodite. You're not born with zero sex or zero gender. Stop it, man. This is fairy tales. You don't get to make us have to believe in fairy tales. You don't get to dictate us believing in fairy tales. And that's what's going on here. Now we're now we're sitting here worried about. You know, offending people in their fairy tales. I don't, if you write, if you believe in fairy tales, I don't care about offending you. I'm not going to sit there and, and believe in something that's not real, not reality, not fact, not truth, just because your feelings might be hurt, man. And this is where we're getting to now. It's, we got way bigger issues than worrying about some damn gender neutral displays. But this is in California. It's happening in California. It, go figure. Go figure. Because that you ain't going to have to worry about Texas or Florida or South Dakota or Tennessee. They're not going to be concerned with no damn gender neutral displays, man. Get the hell out of here with that, man. Who cares, man? They're just damn mannequins wearing freaking clothes to, to just the sole purpose of a mannequin is to advertise the clothes who cares what the mannequin freaking looks like i wouldn't care if they had only black mannequins and no white people mannequins who cares they're just mannequins they're just there for advertisement displays but people they want to nitpick and 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 get offended over things in society that you ain't got no business getting offended over um Next one, $15 minimum wage for businesses with 25, 25 employees or more. You know what this is, right? This is an attack on small businesses. Think about it. Um, during COVID, what were all the businesses that were mainly shut down? Small businesses. Think about it. Most, okay, like small business restaurants. How many small business restaurants have drive-thrus? 
I've never seen one. 42 years of my life, I've never seen a small business restaurant or f- with a, you know, with a um, drive through And all fast foods are pretty much big business, corporate. Every fast food franchise you could think of is pretty much, I've never seen a small business fast food spot. All small business eating spots are usually just dine-in and take-out only. You think the government didn't know that? Of course they did. And if they didn't, then they're complete idiots. So, excuse me, but there's shutdowns for businesses. They already knew it would affect small businesses. And, and these mainstream businesses would just have drive through All these fast food joints would still have drive through but all these small Small business owned restaurants and eating spots literally were just dining and take out only. They were done. They were shut down. Some like most of the there's at least three independent joints over here by where I stay that literally told me out the mouth. If they would have been shut down even 30 days longer, their businesses would have folded in completely. Completely. I mean completely. You know, and they've bounced a couple of them have bounced back. Since then, the um, one of them doesn't seem to be really, really getting a ton of traffic like they used to, you know, because, I mean, that's another thing. When you – some people got a loyal eating base that they go eat certain days, you know, in a week, and you're shut down for so many days, they might change their whole – their whole um, eating habits now. They might just say, well, I'm going to go to this other spot on Thursdays or the southern spot on these other days. Every small business cannot afford $15 minimum wage. They can. This is an attack to put small businesses out of business. This is this is all about just um, catering to the big corporate names, you know, because you know what? $15 an hour for everybody else. First of all, Everybody doesn't deserve $15 an hour. This idea that everybody deserves to get the same minimum wage. Even some people, I hate to say it, some people don't even deserve minimum wage. Because they as soon as they get their job, they don't take their job serious one bit. Like we are like I'm starting to try to figure out what are they basing hiring people on? Like, first of all. You don't hire people that don't want to work, period. You don't hire them. You don't hire people if you feel like you can't trust them. Um, you know, that, that that's the thing. You can't trust everybody you hire. So everybody doesn't deserve fifteen minimum wage, fifteen dollars an hour. You, they're not all going to work hard, so they don't all deserve the same amount of it. Like that's the thing. Like I understand we're looking for quality in the workplace. But if we want a quality in the workplace, then everybody got to work hard in their job. If everybody isn't willing to work hard in the job, then there is no equality in the workplace. You got to be willing to work as hard as me and the next man and or not harder. If you're, work, if you're willing to work any less harder than I am, then there is no equality in the workplace. That's the thing people got to understand about equality. In order for there to be equality anywhere in the society, everybody's got to willing to play by willing to play by the same rules. And I can tell you right now, everybody in society is not willing to play by the same rules. Everywhere I've worked in my entire life, I've been the highest paid employee. Why was I the highest paid employee? Because I was the hardest working employee. The hardest working. You know, when I, I worked in the food industry most of the time, like when I'm not making food, I don't just stand around and sit around and lean on the wall. I wipe down, sweep, and mop, and clean. There's always something to do in the workplace. So anybody you see that's leaning, what's the saying? You ain't got no, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Anybody you see leaning anytime in the workplace does not deserve equality because they're not willing to play by the same rules. They're not willing to work as hard as everybody else. If everybody's not willing to work the same level of hardness, have the same level of honesty, and take their job seriously at the same level, 
then there can't be equality. Like, equality is, is part of, like, the, the fairy tales, the, the, the um, make-believe imaginary world that people think we live in. Like, yes, if people, two different people of different races go to get a, go to apply for a job, yes, they should be judged both basically, both, both the same. Uh, and, and how serious, and that's the thing, they should be judged off of how hard do you think they're going to work and how serious they're going to take this job. I mean, this idea that you hire people just because is bogus. Every business should be looking to hire nothing but people who are going to take the job serious. As a self-employed business owner, I'm not hiring anybody if I don't feel like they're going to take my business serious enough. And I probably will never, ever hire anybody because I don't think nobody, I don't think employees take working for people serious enough. Nine times out of 10, employees do not take their job serious enough for me to hire anybody. I've worked with enough people in the work world to know that they slack on the job, they call in a bunch of times. I mean, it's just so many different things that people do to show that they really aren't serious about working where they're working. They're just going there to work for a paycheck. And I ain't hiring you just so you can work for a paycheck. If you're not willing to put the same commitment into my business that I put in, I wouldn't hire nobody. And that's what people got to realize when you hire somebody. If you're not willing to put the same commitment that I put into my business, why the hell would I hire you in the first place? So no, this $15 an hour minimum wage for all businesses of 25 employees or more is bogus because they can't all, small businesses can't afford to pay everybody all $15 an hour. Everybody doesn't all deserve to make $15 an hour. So people are only worth $10 an hour because they're not taking their job serious because they are leaning while others are cleaning. Or they're calling to work like, you know, once a week. Or if you call it into work twice a month, that's too, that you're not taking your job serious. If you call it a, you should be calling to work more than one time every two to three months. You call it into work twice every two to three months. Why would I hire you? You do not take your job serious. You're just trying to call out sick so you don't have to go to work, man. Like people that go to the bathroom, they stay in the bathroom forever so they don't got to go back to work. They don't got to get back on the clock and go to work yet. They act like they just sit in the bathroom like they've been using the bathroom forever. No, this this is an attack on small businesses. Everybody's not worth $15 an hour anyways because everybody doesn't, they're not committed to the job or take the job serious. I don't care what job it is you're, you're going, applying for, and that's going to hire you. Unless somebody's going to hire you that's going to pay you more money, you have to take what job you can get when you get hired. Unless you're self-employed like me and you just build your business from the ground up by yourself. Yeah, just so I don't like this. I, I really, it really, really upsets me, this little topic, because it's just an attack on small businesses. And I'm considered a small business because I, I do everything myself. And I just think about the reasons why I haven't hired nobody yet, because I don't trust no way to be committed and take the job serious enough. Like I would want them to, you know, they, they got to be as serious and committed as me in this business. If not, then there's nothing to, to there's nothing to talk about or hiring somebody. Nothing to talk about. ASU student harassment punishment. All right. So I've talked about this. Um, you had the two ASU students, um, that pretty much, and I actually saw this, the punishment part on the um, Jericho Green podcast. Uh, I knew there there was there was facing punishment, but when they said what the when he said what the punishment was, I understand why he went in. Um, first of all, the student, the females that harassed the males, those are the racists. They were blatant racists. They blatantly hate white people. 
Uh, it was blatant harassment, harassment, racism, blatant hate, discrimination, whatever words you want to call, call up. Um, ASU is a joke. Their punishment is to write a three-page essay. Like, so ASU just lets people discriminate, racially harass other students. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure that after seeing that, and I'm pretty sure my sister knows about it. I guarantee if her kids got a scholarship from ASU, she would probably throw that shit in the trash. And anybody should. If anybody, any parents get a scholarship for their kids at ASU, you should throw that shit in the trash. Like he said, give it to somebody who needs some newspaper for their damn they bird cage so they bird can shit on it. Because that's, it, it's toilet paper. ASU, a, a scholarship from ASU is, is complete toilet paper. You should just shit on it. Wipe your ass with it. Because why would you want to go to college? This is and this is the same university that they were protesting with Kyle Rittenhouse to, to go there, to attend there. Clear self-defense. Clear self-defense. It just shows you that if people still spew hate after clear self-defense, they're just complete racist. And one of the chicks is like, like Jericho Green says, she's half white. So we're just, we're just now denouncing 50%. I mean, 50% of anything is a lot, a lot. Would you give up 50% of your bank account? Hell no. Would you just give up 50% of your house, your car, 50% of everything you own just because? No, that's a lot. But, but when it comes to race, interracial people just denounce 50%. Of who they are. Because they're not 100% black. They're not. They're not. You know. And I don't know what term we can come up for. Black Caucasians. Blackasians. Blackasians. I, um, I guess that's what we'll, we'll call them. Blackasians. Because. You know. When one of your parents is white. And one of your parents is black. You're not 100%. Black or 100% African American, you know, you're 50%. 50% is a lot. Is a lot. If if a business has a 50% increase on anything, that's a lot. If they have the 50% decrease on anything, if you lost half, of your, if I lost half of my business at once, I'd be out of business. That's a lot. That's that's a lot. Half of your business at once. So like, yeah. But apparently, like Jericho Green says, in race, we denounce 50% of who we are and abortions, you know, because it's abortions. The man has no say so whatsoever because the woman's going to say my body, my choice. But you know what I say? My sperm, my child. How about that? My sperm, my child. But yeah, this is so it's pathetic. It's an embarrassment for ASU. Three page, right on three page essay is not no punishment for harassing students and discriminating them and being boldly, completely, utterly racist to them for no reason. I mean, they're literally just sitting there studying, minding their business, and they get harassed and discriminated on by these two racist chicks. One's half white. One's half white and hates white people. That's another thing. Interracial people, have, you're half white and you hate white people. That's you talk about some hypocritical shit and some double standards. That's one. You know, and then the other chick isn't even she isn't even African American or black at all. She she's like Arabic or whatnot. She's a, she's Arabic. You know, which is the Middle East and it's not Africa. So yeah, and just so you know, Arabics, just so you know, Arabic racist. Woman, Arabics are technically Caucasians because of the bone structure, along with Hispanics and Asians. They are Caucasians. Arabics are just Caucasians with the tan. Stop it, man. See, that's the thing. Y'all don't even know nothing about history and facts in science or anything. There's the Negroid. And then everything else is Caucasian. Everything else is Caucasian, guys. So you're just hating on yourself. It's so hypocritical and double standard. The Asians 
or hip, Asians that hate white people or or Hispanics that hate white people or Arabics that hate white people are just really technically Caucasians too with dark with just darker skin, darker tan. You're Caucasians too. Check the facts, Google it. You have the same bone structure. It's the Caucasians and the Negroid. Then you had the the um the Neanderthal. You know, like these but all these bone structures, Neanderthal's bone structure was different than the, the typical Caucasian and Negroid today. So yeah, y'all don't know nothing about nothing, man. That y'all don't know the Hispanics and Arabics and Asians are Caucasian too, man. Asian, Caucasian, stop it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a disgrace. Uh, anybody that sent your kids to ASU and you paid for it, oh man, good luck with that. Your kids probably just all they learned was, you know, how to be discriminated against or how to discriminate because that's all that seems that's going on in AF. And Air, oh, just so y'all know, a ASU is Arizona State University. So that's all they teach people there. Or that's all they condone is discriminating against or being discriminated on. And discrimination is discrimination. No such thing as reverse discrimination. Racism is racism. No th such thing as reverse racism. You know, and the reason people don't understand is no such thing as hate speech in America. Maybe in other countries, like communist countries and whatnot, we ain't got freedom of speech. But there's freedom of speech. So there's no such thing as that. That's all there is. There's just freedom of speech. You're allowed to say what you want about whoever you want, as long as you don't defamate them. As long as it's not a defamation case, you're allowed to say whatever you want about anybody you want. It's freedom of speech. It's not hate speech. There's no such thing. That's what people don't understand. It just goes to show you the common sense that people don't have. In a country where there's freedom of speech, you can say whatever you want to whoever you want. There's no such thing as hate speech, maybe in a communist country. Now, don't get me wrong. If you call a black person the N-word, I'm not saying they, they're they not going to punch you or they don't got the right to punch you. You know what I'm saying? Or whoop your ass. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's freedom of speech. People can say whatever they want. As long as they're deal, willing to deal with the consequences. That's what I always say. You can say whatever you want. If I want to walk up the shack and tell him to go fuck himself. Hey, I can do that. Freedom of speech. It's not hate speech. Because he probably go power drive me and body slam me and DDT me afterwards. You know, I'm just saying. Say what you want as long as you're willing to deal with whatever consequences may come. But in a country with freedom of speech, there's no such thing as hate speech. It's just freedom of speech. You're allowed to say what you want, man. Y'all just don't put common sense to none of this. Y'all just thinking too hard about it. Or y'all just put these imaginary fairy tales, make-believe views and thoughts and theories up into the mix, which is not reality. It's not reality, you know. So, yeah, ASU is a joke. It really is. Um, and that's pretty much my topics for today. Um, this is episode 99, Paul Pickett Podcast. Don't forget the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Slacker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Video version goes to Rumble, Facebook TV, Instagram, oh, Facebook, my bad, Facebook fan page, profile, Instagram TV, and YouTube as well. <clears throat> and then I'll take the pre-recorded version and I will live stream it on um, typically, um, Twitch or two or three of my, um, Twitter accounts at once usually, which one will be, be Paul Pickett podcast, Twitter, which is Paul P podcast. And then I might, you know, don't promo palace or any castle. Cause I got several Twitters cause I used to have several domains and websites. And as some didn't just start to take off as I wanted them to, I just decided to cons, you know, like just consolidate down to just the businesses that were totally making me money consistently 
and the ones that I wanted to focus on that I knew could make me money more than anything. Um, once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget this podcast is sponsored by Promo Palace LLC at promopalace.biz. It's also sponsored by New Little Apparel at newletter.com. Also, for Shizzle, I got to shout out DizzleBrand.com. Just add ice, Dizzle on ice. Step into the future. Do your Dizzle, DizzleBrand.com. The bottle right here. They got online order links. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and more. And tomorrow we should be banging out episode 100. We're going to do the press release. Um, I've been doing the podcast for about maybe 365 days now and got a, about 100 episodes banged out in 365 days. I'm going to get that press release done, send out that press release, run an ad campaign, and we're going to keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, huh? Method Man style, Wu-Tang style. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Paul Pinkett Podcast. Peace, and I'm out.